In today's video, I'm going to make some iodine pentoxide. This compound has iodine in plus 5 oxidation state, so it's again a strong oxidizer. Iodine pentoxide can detect carbon monoxide in its room temperature. Canforth has a good video on it, and link is in the description. To prepare this compound, I first convert potassium chloride to iodate, then to barium iodate. Then it's reacted with sulfuric acid to get iodic acid. Finally, dehydrated to iodine pentoxide. So, in terms of chemicals, these are what I used. Potassium chloride, iodine, nitric acid, potassium hydroxide, barium chloride, calcium nitrate, and sulfuric acid. First, 31 grams of potassium chloride is dissolved in 100 ml of water. Wait for all the solid has dissolved, and 36 grams of iodine is added. Then, add 1 ml of nitric acid as a catalyst. As the reaction progresses, solution will heat up. And if it rises above 90 degrees Celsius, submerge the flask into water to condense any crazy iodine vapor. Because the chemical affinity of halogen for oxygen increases as we go down the periodic table, this reaction is thermodynamically favorable. But it's suggested that nitric acid converts small amount of chloride to chloric acid, which is far strong oxidizing agent than chloride, and it oxidizes iodine to iodate. And excess iodine is used because some free chlorine can oxidize remaining iodine to iodic acid. Once all the iodine disappears, adjust the pH to neutral by adding potassium hydroxide. Then the solution is allowed to cool to let potassium iodate crystallize out. After that, potassium iodate is filtered and thoroughly dried. Yield is 98% based on potassium chloride or 43% based on iodine. Next, I need to make another precursor, barium nitrate. It's by mixing equal molar of barium chloride and calcium nitrate. Any nitrate salt can be used, as long as its chloride salt has high solubility, like sodium nitrate or ammonium nitrate. Here, I dissolve up one more of calcium nitrate and one more of barium chloride. Then, after the half filtration, I mix up two solutions and allow to cool. Then, barium nitrate is filtered out. Yield is 45%, probably most of the products still in the solution. And for the following step, I dissolve 43 grams of potassium iodate and 26 grams of barium nitrate separately, each in 250 milliliters of boiling water. Then, Add two solution together while boiling, and allow it to cool, then filter out the barium iodate. And for the final step, is convert barium iodate to iodic acid. First, add 8 ml of sulfuric acid into about 100 ml of water. Then, suspend all the barium iodate in around 250 ml of water. Bring the solution to boil, and mix it together and keep it boiled for at least 15 minutes to ensure all the barium iodine is reacted. Then, again filter the solution and retain the filtrate. And then evaporate down the iodic acid solution until it crystallizes out. I found it has the tendency to turn into a solid mass in the instance, but this should not affect the dehydration step. The iodic acid was washed by 10 ml of concentrated nitric acid for 3 times. Then it's transferred onto a crystallizing dish, and the hot plate is turned to maximum heat. First, a lot of nitric acid will come off, so please do this in a well-ventilated area. The conversion is completed when it no longer emits acid vapor, and the ion pentoxide is heated at 250 degrees Celsius in the oven for 2 hours. Iodine pentoxide is stored in an airtight container, and the yield is 62% based on potassium iodate, so the overall yield is 27% based on iodine, or 56% based on potassium chloride. To test out if I really made iodine pentoxide, a small amount of iodine pentoxide is placed in a test tube, and is blasted with a torch. At high temperature, iodine pentoxide decomposes to iodine oxygen, which has a very intense purple color. That brings this to the end of video, and here's a good place to end the video.